Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is January 7th and we're going to talk about this strong storm system and likely bomb cyclone that's going to move into parts of British Columbia and Western Washington. And we're going to eventually affect parts of California and the Intermountain West as well. This is going to bring the potential for some strong to even damaging winds to parts of the coastlines and the interior Washington State area, mostly along the Strait of the Fuca, including Whidbey Island and the San Juan Islands. There's potential for gusts over 60 miles per hour, which is damaging wind gusts. There's also blizzard warnings for all of the cast most of the cascades of Washington and Oregon, mainly for the northern areas and the Olympic Mountains as well. This is the first time since 2011 is, that this has actually happened. So a pretty rare event unfolding with this powerful storm system happening in the next few days. That storm first storm system moves out on Wednesday before we get um it looks like uh, some Arctic air as we go through Thursday into Friday. Just how much Arctic air and how much snow we're going to get is really dependent on the exact track of this cold air and models are still disagreeing quite a bit. So we're not going to go super in detail just yet. I'll probably wait in to do that t tomorrow. And then we're also going to take a quick look at the extended forecast. We really can't do say anything about seven over seven days out because models are having issues just within a few days. So we're going to worry about that later. And without further ado, let's get right into the forecast. Now we're looking at general ridge and trough positions on the European model. You can see the deep trough of low pressure that's moving over much of the western U.S. This is actually bringing some snow to parts of central and southern Arizona. Even some Tucson was getting some snow earlier and may still be. This is bringing some colder air and some isolated showers to parts of western Washington and California. This was actually bringing a pretty decent um, storm to parts of Southern California, but that should be ending later today and as we go into tomorrow. If we play this out, we can see that this trough kind of moves west into the central U.S. with a powerful storm and likely blizzard on the northern side of this. But you can see our next storm rapidly strengthen as it moves towards the British Columbia coast, makes landfall just north, uh, just north of the Vancouver Island area between Haida Gwaii. This is going to cast a powerful gradient to the south of it over parts of southwest BC, Washington, and Oregon. This is going to cause some strong winds over the region as well. And there's potential for another coastal low as we go through very, very late on Tuesday and early Wednesday that could affect parts of um, Oregon. But some models don't even have this, so who knows at this point. But as we play this through into Thursday, watch this deep cold trough move right out of the arctic regions of canada we've been watching this very closely at least i have on my weather page on twitter unfortunately i haven't really been, had enough time to post a video until now on this on this youtube channel now we can see that the some of the malls were showing this digging out over the waters a bit more this would create a more dynamic snowstorm and blockbuster arctic blast but right now, this kind of clips us on some of the most recent models, and the European model is agreeing with the Canadian Gem model and also the Icon. I'll show you in a little bit that the GFS is kind of out the lunch with this and showing not much cold air as well. But this would bring in at least some chance of snow in multiple days of very cold air with temperatures possibly getting into the teens for parts of western Washington, maybe even getting into the single digits and negatives, at least wind chill wise, to the east. Now, if we take a closer look at things, here's British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. Here's Alaska. Up here, here's Yukon. And you can see it, the, the, this is the GFS on the right and the European model on the left. And if we play this through, we can see pretty similar agreement between both models as we go through the, the, the first two days. You can see maybe the storm's a little stronger on the GFS, but relatively similar. That is to be expected. But as we play this out and go to that polar lobe on the models, look at this big difference. The European model is a lot more west with that and also a stronger trough. This would bring colder air over the region and more potential moisture as well. This on the, the GFS, on the other hand, only brings a glancing blow with maybe one day of very cold temperatures before things warm up the next day. Wouldn't really bring much snowfall as well. But you can see that this the malls are really um, disagreeing at this point. And you see the European mall kind of has it lingering over parts of the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West as well. But the GFS just kicks it off and actually starts building in a ridge rather quickly right after that. Now if we look at the GEM mall, this is the Canadian model. And you can see very similar in the short term. But watch what the cold trough does. 
it opens up just as much or even maybe a little more than the European mall and it's completely on the opposite side of the GFS really and keeps that polar lobe hung over the area as well just similar to the European mall. This is showing me that there's pretty good agreement between the gem and the euro model and that G GFS is possibly out the lunch and it's the Canadian mall is um, acclimated to the Canadian climate so I kind of trust it a bit more than the GFS at least in this situation. But we'll have to just continue to watch this as we go and see what the models tomorrow say about this. Now we're looking at the 850 millibar temperature anomalies on the European mall on the left and the GFS on the right. So this 850 millibars is about 5,000 feet in the air. And temperature anomalies basically how far the temperature is from normal. So colder temperatures means below normal temperatures and warmer temperatures means obviously above normal temperatures. And if we play this through, you can see that the um as we we can see that our storm system moves in the part just um on the southern side of Hideaway or just south of Hideaway over on Monday in the Tuesday morning. This brings the cooler air and potential for some thunderstorms as well for parts of Washington and Oregon as well. You can also see that the cold the air is already a little bit colder on the European mall here on the left, and this would also bring strong winds to parts of the region as we go through later Tuesday into very early on Wednesday as well. Strong ones will actually start up late on Monday night. But you can see if we play this through on Thursday in the parts of Friday, you can see the air is much colder on the European mall and goes more over the ocean producing more precipitation likely. But the GFS is just this glancing blow. It kind of just leaves a little kiss to us as it moves off to the east. And you can see it's basically gone by Saturday. But you can see the European mall it hangs on as we go through parts of Saturday as well. And some of the models have it even lasting even longer. And you can see the GFS has like completely gone by later on Monday, actually next week. And the European mall still has it at least in the vicinity of the Pacific Northwest. Now, if we look at the six hour precipitation tolls, and this is in millimeters, let me um, turn that to inches. Now, if we play this out, you can see that as we go over into tomorrow and Monday, you can see that relatively heavy precipitation tolls start moving into the parts of Washington, Oregon, Southwest BC. This is going to generate some very heavy snow tolls in parts of the mountains with feet of snow expected in the Olympics, the Southwest BC area, and also the Cascades of Washington and Oregon. There's also going to be some blizzard conditions possible as well. And blizzard warnings are up once again for much of the area from late Monday in the early on Wednesday. For the first time since 2011 and you can see that the precipitation can kind of continues as this deep trough moves over the area on wednesday in the thursday some of this could be this some of this will likely be in the form of snow if the temperatures can get cold enough on thursday so you can see this there's kind of this arctic boundary slash front that moves down over the puget sound parts of washington before moving into the oregon coast and cutting off all precipitation in the washington and bc but some snow can be expected before, right as that Arctic front is moving through. And there are always going to be some surprises as we actually get close to that day. Now looking at the mean sea level pressure on the European mall, you can see that the, as we go through tomorrow into Tuesday, this powerful storm system starts forming. And you can see that it deepens more than 24 millibars in an hour, which classifies it as a bomb cyclone. That is an actual meteorological term, and it's not just some sort of hype term. And you can see that this bomb cyclone moves right into the northwest tip of Vancouver at 975 millibar low. You can see that it causes this very um, strong pressure gradient over western Washington and southwest BC. This is going to bring the potential for a very strong westerly surge event down the Strait on the Fugit in the parts of San Juan Islands, Port Angeles, Port Townsend, and parts of Whidbey Island, Camano Island down there. And that's going to be from mainly Tuesday afternoon through Tuesday evening as well. But then you can see as we go through Wednesday and the Thursday, you can see the Arctic high. This Arctic pressure that results from that cold air up above, it causes high, the cold air causes high pressure at the surface and forms an Arctic high, as we call it, because the air originates in the Arctic. You can see if the European mall brings a quite an Arctic blast as we go through Thursday in the Friday, dropping temperatures down very low. And then you can see another system move in the California and parts of Oregon as well. This has the potential to bring an atmospheric river in the California, actually. And if we go and look at the precipitable water or how much moisture there is in the air, you can see that it brings 
If we go out here, look at this. Now you can see the battle of the air mass. You can see the very dry Arctic air um, smashing into this uh, powerful, actually a pretty powerful atmospheric river moving in the California. This would be a huge snowmaker for parts of the Sierra Nevadas, bringing strong winds to the California coastline with also some heavy rain as well down there. There would also be maybe even some flooding issues with this for parts of the California coastline before it moves down in and out of California by later by the beginning of next week. There's still a lot of time to look at this and I'll likely take a closer look at this on Friday of this coming of this coming week as well. But you can see the battle of the air masses and right where they meet is going to be kind of where the uh, snow tolls are going to be. Parts of Portland could get snow from this as this moisture clashes into the cold air and produces snow. But there's going to be so many different differences in the mall still with that. Now, if we look at the six hour precipitation toll on the European mall, wait, we actually already looked at this. Sorry about that. Here's the 10 meter wind gusts on the European mall. If we play this through, you can see the storm system forming early on Monday before bombing out right at the northwest tip of Vancouver Island on Tuesday with wind gusts over hurricane force just off the coast. This is going to create some pretty large waves over the region. So. If you're on the coast uh, coastline and wave watching, just never um, leave your back to the ocean and always just be careful out there. And don't stand on logs or jetties. But you can see this powerful westerly surge as this pressure gradient pushes inland. And you can see some gusts approaching over 60 miles per hour for parts of Whidbey. This is, is classified as damaging winds as it can cause power outages and tree damage. So there is potential for a quite a powerful windstorm for parts of Whidbey Island and places along the Strait on the Fuca. As we go through Thursday and the Friday, you can see our Arctic air starting to move out of the air, out over the area, and you can see that the Fraser River outflow winds from the cold air flowing through the Fraser River Valley, creating some gusts over 50 miles per hour for parts of Whatcom County and San Juan's. We'll continue to look at this as we go, but it looks like some powerful cold north. East winds are going to be pumping over parts of Northwest Washington as we go later on Thursday in the Friday. And this actually continues into the weekend before calming down a bit as we go through early next week. But we'll continue to look at that. Now looking at toll snow and 10 to 1 ratio. And this is, as we go through this weekend, you can see very heavy um, totals in the mountains with over multiple feet of snow expected. And you can see that the European Mall actually brings a decent snowstorm to um, Portland and parts of Washington as well. These amounts are going to change drastically over the coming days, but this is just showing the potential for some lowland snow as we go through later this week and into the weekend. Now looking at the National Blunder Malls, uh, this is 10 meter wind gusts also. If we play this out, we can see that there's going to be some strong winds coming as we go through later on Monday. And this is National Blend of Malls, so it mashes together a bunch of different models, creating a blend of them, which is why it's called the National Blend of Malls. So it kind of gives us a better idea what at what winds we may expect. And you can see the National Blend of Malls even has gusts up towards 65 miles per hour on the Strait of Juan de Fuga. This is one of the strongest um, signals for wind I've seen on the National Blend of Malls maybe ever for the Strait of Juan de Fuga. So there's some pretty high end potential for a pretty um, dangerous windstorm for parts of western and northern Whidbey Island, parts of southern um, San Juan Island, parts of northern um, Port Angeles and Port Townsend as well, including Fidalgo Island and Anacortes. And this kind of calmed down as we go through late, really late on Tuesday into early on Wednesday. Now looking at the national, uh, I mean the North American Mall or the NAM 3 Cam, which is it's called. And now we can see the strong winds also on this mall. You can see the powerful cold front moving down the coast as we go through late into um, Monday and early Tuesday. And you can see that this starts to bring blizzard conditions, the parts that cas cascades at this point. And these blizzard conditions are going to be possible at the pass level and most of the Washington and Oregon cascades as we go through Tuesday in the early on Wednesday. So definitely be careful if you have to drive over the passes. There's a potential for the passes to be completely closed down by later on Tuesday, which is actually pretty safe because you do not want to be driving in blizzard conditions when in the mountains with heavy snow falling 
That is not fun for anyone, especially if you get stuck. Now you can see the powerful westerly surge of winds as you go down, down the straight one. They figure you can see the the Nam actually has gusts almost approaching 70 miles per hour south of Victoria. So definitely some very high end potential. And this will affect parts of Whidbey Island, Western Skagit and Island counties and Southern San Juan counties as well. Now looking at some National Weather Service maps, here's from the National Weather Service of Seattle, Washington. Heavy mountain snows is expected as we saw on the um, some of the models, and you can see localized three-day totals of over four to five feet possible, so some pretty extreme totals. And you can see that this is winter storm watch, but I'm going to show you in a little bit that these have been upgraded, the winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings. Blizzard warnings for the first time since 2011, which is pretty crazy. This is from early on Monday through early on Wednesday. Heavy snow, two to four feet possible, isolated higher amounts. Strong wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour. Blowing snow could create whiteout conditions. Cascades and Olympic mountains above 2,000 feet. Prepare by winterizing your vehicles. Visiting wsdot.com slash travel slash real time slash map for latest road conditions. Now looking at the strong winds Monday night and the Tuesday night, and you can see the bullseye right on the straight one, the few can parts of the coastlines of Washington. You can see that they're showing the potential for 60 to 70 miles per hour on the straight one, the few There's going to be a potential for very, very large waves as we go through on Tuesday. There's going to be coastal flooding issues. There's going to be power outage issues. There's going to be um, wind damage issues potentially as well. So be very prepared when if you are living on Woodby Island anywhere around the Strait on the Fuca from Nia Bay all the way to Friday Harbor, Anacortes, Port Townsend, Port Angeles. And you can see if you're on living on the coast in some of those exposed beaches, there's gonna be some strong winds as well. Generally blustery everywhere else with maybe some gusts over 40 miles per hour for parts of Bellingham. Maybe part it's 35 to 40 miles per hour for Seattle and over the 30 mile per hour range in parts of the southern Puget Sound. Now for um, some focus on winter driving safety. You can prevent a bad situation from getting worse. If you're involved in an accident, try to pull your vehicle off the road and use hazard lights, flares, reflectors, or flashlights to warn other drivers. Stay off the road and dial 911. Avoid risky tra driving behavior. Always avoid risky behavior such as texting or phone calls, speeding, or drugs slash alcohol use. These activities are always dangerous, but the risk is much higher in winter weather and much higher in blizzard weather as well. Wear your seatbelt. Accidents happen more frequently with wet and icy roads. Always wear your seatbelt and ensure everyone in your vehicle does the same. So now, if we go back to the National Weather Service map for and National Weather Service of Seattle, you can see that this highlighted area is all blizzard warnings for the Cascades and Olympics. This is the first time since 2011 that the National Weather Service of Seattle has issued blizzard warnings. You can see gale watches for the entire northwestern part of Washington where those westerly surge is possible. There's a chance these get upgraded the storm watches if the westerly winds tend to um, look stronger than the forecasted right now. But some high wind warnings are also possible for Whidbey Island, maybe even the um, parts of San Juan Island as well. Now looking at the Portland National Weather Service, you can also see um, blizzard warnings and uh, winter storm warnings and a wind advisory out for parts of Western Oregon. Blizzard warnings for the Cascades, wind advisory for the Portland Metro and parts of um, Central and Northern Willamette Valleys. This includes uh, parts of Southwestern um, Washington as well and Vancouver. Now looking at strong winds out east, this is eastern Washington from the National Weather Service of Spokane. Isolated power outages, tree damage, and difficult travel possible. This is for Tuesday. Be prepared. Strongest winds Tuesday morning and afternoon. This it can go the same for parts of western Washington with that strong low moving in the British Columbia. The combination of heavy mountain snow and strong winds will create dangerous travel conditions over mountain passes. Now looking at the weather impact outlook from the National Weather Service of Spokane. Generally, the um, action starts up tomorrow, Monday, widespread snow, Monday, heavy mountain snow, Tuesday, snow, wind, areas of rain, heavy mountain snow, Wednesday, light snow, and then Thursday and Friday, light snow, much colder, potentially dangerous wind chills as we go through Friday morning as well. Um, and the National Weather Service of Sacramento also has a cold weather safety as some cold weather is expected in parts of central and northern California as well. People dress in layers, overexposed skin, and, and limit time outside. Pets, bring your pets indoors and make sure that they have a warm place with food and water. Plants, bring sensitive plants inside. Know that temperature thresholds of your plants and crops. Now, frost advisory and freeze warning for Monday morning at for San Francisco and parts of 
um, Central and Southern California, actually, especially the valley locations. Minimum temperatures of at least 32 to 35 degrees are expected for the frost advisory in this bluish color. These conditions are hazardous or to unsheltered and marginally sheltered populations. Protect pets, plants, people, and pipes from the cold. A freeze warning means that minimum temperatures of at least 32 degrees or colder are expected in this purple. These conditions are hazardous to unsheltered or marginally sheltered populations, protect people, pets, plants, and pipes from the cold. Now looking at the National Weather Service of Los Angeles, California, here's the peak surf heights. Central coast 15 to 20 feet and lower as you go farther south on the coastline. Hazardous surf for west southwest California, dangerous rip currents, stay off rocks until you swim near lifeguards. This is going to continue as we go through Monday morning tomorrow as well. So just be careful out there on those beaches. Now looking at the European Ensemble members, you can see this is for Whidbey Island Naval Air Station. You can see the Ensemble mean is at 60 miles per hour with multiple members approaching 70 miles per hour. So a major windstorm is possible for parts of North, Northern and Western Whidbey Island, including parts of the San Juans, Fidalgo Island, and Port Angeles and Port Townsend. As we go through on Tuesday, you can see that the snow potential on the Whidbey Island Naval Air Station um, plot, you can see this is all 50 ensemble members, and you can see almost every single one has some sort of snow as we go through later this week. Just how much that's going to happen is still in question, but you can see that there's generally good agreement and some cold and snow as we go through later this week. Some models have way less snow, some models have more snow. We'll just continue to look at this as we go. Seattle Tacoma International Airport, you can see that it's going to get pretty gusty with wind gusts maybe approaching 45 miles per hour as we go through on um, Tuesday and maybe into early on Wednesday. Looking at Seattle, you can see that the ensemble show very cold temperatures with the ensemble mean approaching 18 to 19 degrees, which is very cold, especially for Seattle. And you can see the control run was getting down near 12 degrees, which I don't think has happened in over a decade, I'm pretty sure. And you can see that most ensembles agree there's a very isolated few ensembles that have no Arctic blast whatsoever, but I'm gaining confidence in saying that we are going to get at least some sort of Arctic blast as we go through later this week. Whether it's going to be just a day or two of cold or multiple days of cold and potential snow is still in question. Now looking at Stevens Pass, total snow in inches, and you can see that the mean by um, the f the two week range is over, uh, approaching over 60 inches. There's definitely some heavy snow falling. Most of this is going to be falling over the next couple of days with this winter storm and blizzard warnings with over a couple of feet of snow expected in some of the passes. Now looking at the Portland International Airport, also got good snow sig signal, even better than Seattle as some of that gorge, the g cold winds out of the Columbia Gorge can bring the temperatures locally um, colder for parts of the Portland metro area and can increase snow chances. The, the ensemble means approaching a half a foot of snow. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but the potential for snow in Portland is also there as we go through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Portland International Airport temperature plot as well. You can see the mean is down near the teens as well, and the control run actually gets into the single digits. I don't know if the single digits are likely going to happen. That hasn't happened in Portland in a very long time, so likely not going to happen, but there is at least some slight potential of that. Sacramento International Airport, you can see increased systems as we go through later this week and potentially that cold, uh, uh, that cold trough moving over the Pacific Northwest opens the window for a potential atmospheric river. But you can see great um, variability between the models with some models showing over nine inches of precipitation as we go through the two week range. But you can see also some members have almost zero rain. So definitely some pretty high variability in some of the ensemble members. San Francisco is kind of the same idea, maybe even better agreement in the members of at least some sort of storm system as we go through later this week and into next week. Now looking at the Los Angeles International Airport, you can see there's also some potential down there. And look at the six to 10 day temperature, like you can see the bullseye over the central and western US. This purple was over parts of Washington and Oregon the other day, but has since um, calmed down as some of the malls had the colder air going eastward. Still um, looking at a likely Arctic blast, at least for a couple of days. You can see um, below to near normal precipitation chances for the Pacific Northwest as that colder air brings in drier air. But California is looking potentially wetter than normal. 
Now looking at the 8th to 14 day temperature outlook, this is January 15th through the 21st. You can see below average temperatures potentially remaining over the Pacific Northwest, maybe above average for California as some of those specific systems bring atmospheric rivers into California. Now looking at 8, for the, 8 the 14 day precipitation outlook for the same time period, you can see that above average precipitation is potentially expected for much of the West Coast except maybe western Washington. So plenty of active weather to look at as we go through uh, early the middle of January. Well, that's it for this video, everybody. Thank you for um, watching through this very long video. I hope everybody found it informative and enjoyable. There was a lot to talk about. Strong winds, heavy snow, blizzard conditions, heavy rain, all possible as we go through the next few days with this powerful storm system moving in the Pacific Northwest. California will start being affected as we go through later next week, potentially as that cold trough maybe pushes some wet storm systems in the California. But right now, the Pacific Northwest is the bullseye, and I will be focusing on the Pacific Northwest over the coming week. There's also the potential for that Arctic blast as we go through later this week, starting Wednesday in the Thursday for parts of Western Washington, Oregon. The exact um, temperatures and how cold it's going to get is going to continue to change as we go over the next couple of days. I'll likely um, try to do um, another video tomorrow to go over um, these chances. But other than that, we're just going to have to see and um, wait out. And a lot of times we don't know what exactly is going to happen until it actually does happen. And that's the kind of the old fashioned way of um, forecasting is just waiting and seeing what will happen. So I hope everybody has had a great weekend. Please just get prepared for some strong winds. If you're living along the Strait of the Fuca, including Whidbey Island, San Juan Islands, Port Angeles and parts of um, the Northern Olympic Peninsula. And also be prepared if you are driving over the, the passes the next couple of days, please just if you don't have to, please do not go over the passes, at least starting tomorrow morning as winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings and all of that is going to be going into effect later tomorrow with heavy snow and strong winds, which is not a good combo whatsoever. And I don't want anybody getting stuck out there. So stay safe out there. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you tomorrow.